So, you want to build a storage room, but you don't know how. Well, in today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to build a storage room using my very own storage room that I've been using for well over two years now in my 35,000 day hardcore world. So, there are a few things you need to ask yourself before we get into today's video. One of them being, what items would you like to display and how would you like to display those items? Two, would you like to automate your storage room and how much automation would you want behind your storage room? Meaning, do you want a shulker unloader, a shulker uh, loader, redstone lights at the very top to light up when items are going through your filter system, so on and so forth. And lastly, how would you like to minimize the amount of lag inside of your storage room? What can your storage room even handle? Storage rooms are notoriously incredibly laggy because chests are an entity. Hoppers are entities. There's a lot of redstone going on behind these walls. So I'm going to teach you guys not only how to make the redstone behind your storage room using an Impulse SV bulletproof design that's been out for about 10 years now. I use it for basically every single storage room that I use. I'm going to be teaching you guys how to do a shulker unloader, a shulker loader, the lights above your items that you would like to display, how to minimize the amount of lag that a storage room can produce, how to fix a storage room when you need to fix it because yes, storage rooms do require maintenance over time because of chunk borders, uh, going in and out of portals. There are multiple things that can go wrong, so I'm going to be teaching you guys how to fix that how to future-proof your storage room, and how to minimize headaches along the way. So, without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so, when it comes to basically sorting through all of your items in the game, this is one big tip that I have, because I've learned a lot over the time. This is my input system right here. So, what I basically do is I put shulkers in here, it offloads it, so we'll probably be able to see what's going through the hoppers down here. Right now it's purple terracotta. But the way that I have everything organized is I try to go with what I have the most of and work my way through it. Whatever makes the most amount of sense to you at the end of the day is what's going to make your item sorter a lot more better for you in the long run. So I try to keep all of my stones together. I did a little bit of a gradient here to help out with different palette selection. Try to keep all of my lights together, my prismarine, my quartz, my bone blocks. I mainly focus on a lot of color here. As we make our way through here, this is where things get to become really important. This section right here is an absolute game changer. And let me explain why. So, I have paper, sand, gravel, and gunpowder. These four chests, I can craft rockets, I can craft concrete powder, I can craft TNT, I can craft multiple items without having to move around my storage room all that much because the bigger your storage room, the more traveling back and forth you're going to have to do. So you need to take that in consideration because in the long run, that's going to catch up to you. So having some recipes nearby is extremely nice. Now, I have a gunpowder farm behind my sorter that filters into this. And over here, I also have a sugarcane farm that filters in over here. So in hindsight, honestly, I should have put my sugarcane farm over by my gunpowder farm and had everything filter right in here so I didn't have to go back and forth when it comes to making paper. Just to give you guys a little bit of a heads up on how to properly plan out your storage room. Uh, as we go through here, I've got all the woods on display, all the planks on display. Give myself a few slots here available for any other woods that may potentially come into the game. Over here, I start to segue my way into all the slabs and the stair variants, trying to keep all my woods together. It gets a little bit more complex as the updates continue to keep coming out. Over here... We just basically went with an exact rainbow here. So we've got the um, the wool, the terracotta, the concrete with the concrete powder variant right next to it. All of our glass. 
along there. And then this little corner right here is kind of like a weird miscellaneous, didn't really fit anywhere kind of deal. But I still wanted to auto sort it because I do get a lot of them. Meaning quartz, magma blocks, uh, nether wart, nether brick, dripstone, you name it. Left myself a few spaces right here for future uh, updates. Um, another like little bit of miscellaneous stuff. And most importantly, every single item sorter should 100% come with an overflow. Anything that I don't organize will automatically get filtered into my overflow here. Um, this is where my shulkers get put after my shulker loader. And let's get into this little bit back here. You'll see that I have composters over top of all of my hoppers. That basically helps mitigate the amount of lag because basically what the composter is telling the hopper to do is pretty much to shut up and to stop thinking about what items it could pull. So it's only thinking about what could potentially be in here and there's nothing in here. So it basically tells the hopper to relax. Up here, another extremely important thing, I have an overflow protection. That way if my overflow gets overflowed, then I also have an input straight into the garbage so I don't uh, completely crash my entire system because obviously if back here gets backed up, it goes all the way down the line, destroys all of your redstone. Uh, and I've chosen to go into lava. That way if I throw my, my, my sword or anything netherite inside of here, um, it won't burn inside the lava. Cactus is a lot more unforgiving uh, than what you're going to need here. We're going to be going over a little bit of the input system. I know this looks very complicated, but it's not. Um, let's get in over here a little bit. You can hear that that just went off. That means that we should have another shulker popping in here. So that's done. So let's get into a little bit of the redstone behind this madness, and we can get into that now that we've shown you a little bit about the ideas of how I display the items here. All right, I've always wanted to say this, but step into my office. <laughs> Brand new addition to the base. This is my, this is where I'm going to teach you guys how to build the redstone behind your storage room over here. So let's get into it. So I know the inventory looks like a little bit of a mess, but you're going to need some building blocks, of course. You're going to need some redstone dust, some comparators, a redstone torch, repeaters. We're going to be teaching you guys how to basically do the light add-on little bit of glass you're gonna need yourself some named items extremely important and some chests of course so i don't want you guys to become overwhelmed here but we're gonna start off with a t uh actually just in um no yeah yeah we're gonna start off with a t we'll do a module of five so one two three four we have our module here and I'm going to teach you guys how to do this, basically. So, the very top, we're going to start off with... That's not a comparator. A comparator. Make sure your comparators are facing this way. Away from the edge of that T over there. Okay? Underneath those comparators, we're going to be placing our redstone torches. We're going to take hoppers. And we're going to filter the hoppers into the comparator like so. Underneath these hoppers, we're going to be having other hoppers going down like that. And then let's say we put down our chests. So right here, like that. And then we can basically place in our hoppers like this. This is now how we're going to be doing your redstone. So if you really want to make sure that everything's going, you can go all the way down 10, 15 blocks. Who cares? As long as your PC can handle it. I can even link some really good modifications to make that your storage room a lot less laggy if you guys would like. Behind your comparators here, we're going to be doing redstone dust going like that. So there's a reason why I've left this little area open. And that's because we're going to be putting in our repeaters going into our redstone torches. Now we're going to be placing blocks behind those repeaters and then placing more redstone dust like that. 
So that is basically all you need. So any item that you want to auto sort now will go through this system. We're going to have to have an input. So we're going to place our input. This is going to be our input above here. And any item that does not belong, this hopper chain will not pick up. So let's say you wanted to organize gold. Whatever it may be, you could do it like this. So see how this one comparator is on? That's just telling me that there's hoppers in here. That's already locking the hopper. So we're going to grab our filter item here. And we're going to grab whatever item we want to sort. So let's go for like the middle here. You're going to take your filter item. You're going to fill up these last four columns of your hopper. And then you're going to be placing your stone in here. So really important. This will drop down to 41 and then it will stay at 41. So what the comparator does here is it's going to compare items as they flow through. So if I pop items into there. Obviously, this is going to be full. You doofus. Um, pretend that never happened. We're going to block that. We're going to block that. This. And this will be our overflow. Okay. So now we can put the stone in here. And you'll notice now we're getting 42s out of here. So the comparator is immediately reading that there's a 42 coming out of there, giving out another signal making that repeater go off and turning off that redstone torch, which ultimately is unlocking the hopper, allowing items to filter through. If that makes sense. So that's how straightforward the impulse SV item sorter is. Now we're going to add some things in order to deck this thing out. So what we're going to do here is we're going to be placing glass. The really cool property of glass is that you could place redstone dust above and also have the line go through the glass. Really cool. We're going to get above here one more time. And we're going to place blocks like this. Only so we're able to... Pl oh. I take it all back. We're going to get rid of this. And we're going to have those facing down. Like that. Alright. So you're going to want to have observers observing this entire line. Notice how when that stone went off, this guy was flashing. Well, that guy above there will be flashing, setting off this guy right here. So above that observer, whoops, we're going to be placing blocks going all the way across here. This is going to help out with basically isolating the signal coming out of these observers. Place blocks like that. We're going to have our blocks coming in like this. We're going to be placing two more. Like that. And we're going to have one full block like this. Now we can put our lights like this so that should be perfectly in line with your chest here extremely straightforward now for the difficult part the redstone repeaters we're going to be putting redstone repeaters down like this all of them being on one tick like that and then we're going to be putting in our redstone repeaters like this no ticks. So now, when I place items inside of here, you'll see that that light turns on. Plain and simple. Now it's telling us that we are sorting stone brick. Basically like that. Hopefully that helps you guys out. So this is basically the item sorter module that you guys will be using moving forward. So let's say that we wanted to also do a little bit of a grab and go shulker loader. This is something that I have inside my storage room. 
I should have probably made this a block higher. So we're just going to get rid of this. Like that. Uh, let's say you want to have the, let's say like black shulker boxes filling up with that stone right there. Grab and go is extremely nice to have, especially when you're just like, go, go, go. And you're on a mission and trying to get stuff done. All you got to do. Uh, over time, this shulker will basically fill up with all the items that you would like. And I can show you guys how I have that all implement implemented up above. So let's get into that. Okay, so you notice how I've got basically all the shulkers going all the way down here? Well, if I just want to have one shulker box full of skulk, I can grab this out of here, do whatever I need to do with it, and then I'll pop it back. Same thing goes with tile and all these other corresponding blocks. It helps so I don't have to plop down shulker boxes. Grab what I need and then throw it inside of uh, inside of here. You could also load these shulker boxes directly into your chest. But I feel like unless you have a shulker farm, that's not really going to be very likely. And honestly, in the great words of Fwip, if you have too many items in your storage room, you're not building enough. So there's that. Okay, so behind me it looks a little bit daunting, but don't worry. We're going to go through this together. I'm going to show you guys how to basically build a shulker unloader, a dropper tower, and how to basically filter into your hopper chain above your filter of your storage room here. So... We're going to focus primarily just on the, the shulker unloader here. So we're going to plop shulkers into here. You can have basically, you can have like double chests up here. It doesn't matter. Throw all of your shulkers in there as your heart's desire. Okay. It's going to load it into a dispenser. In front of this dispenser, you're going to have a hopper chain facing into your dropper tower. Whoops. Right here. And then beyond this comparator right here, we're going to have hoppers facing into this chest over here. And I'll explain why in a minute. We're going to have our comparator with our observer. Very important. We're going to have a block here. Slime piston or sticky piston with an observer. Making sure to power this block right here. Or this block. It doesn't matter. It needs to be able to shift back and forth and power uh, along the way. So, in order for this to work a little bit more properly, I'm going to place some blocks right here just to kind of help out with this a little bit. That way, I can show you guys what this hopper chain over here is going to be for. So, we have our skulk in here. So, we're going to press this button. We're going to press it one more time. Boom. Immediately gets sifted right into our dropper tower over here. Now, you're probably wondering, well, how the heck does the dropper tower work? Well, let's disconnect this whole thing and I can go over it a little bit with you guys. So behind these droppers, you're going to have going all the way up. So basically, all you got to do is just pillar up with droppers. You're going to have redstone dust coming out like this. You're going to have a block like that. You're going to have blocks behind all of your droppers. And then you're going to have observers making sure that they power the block that's going going to power the dropper behind it. Right into your hopper chain right here. Pretend this is your storage room. This is your hopper chain right here. This is where your dropper tower is going to connect. Remember, this is your filter, and this is the hoppers that are going to basically fill your chest with items, and then uh, all the way into your shulker loader. Now, all we're going to do is we're going to pillar up with our observers, just like that. We're going to get rid of that last one. We're going to pillar in like this. Have that guy facing this way. And then we're going to have this guy facing this way. And you see how now it's starting to connect all the way up. Any item that basically goes through this dropper is now going to be powered. And it's going to be powered all the way up like this sometimes it's a bit weird to kind of see if items are flowing through uh, droppers and stuff like that but i can assure you it's happening so 
What happens when this guy runs out of blocks? Well, let's get into that. Now that we have about 15 of those now, when this thing reaches zero, you'll see that this piston kicks off. And I'll give you guys a little bit of a bird's eye. See that? Gets put into this chest over here. But since I don't have the entire thing completely closed off, which you should, it probably ended up way over here or something like that. Uh, wherever the heck that shulker went, it basically flew off into, like, you know, the abyss. Anyways, you need to have, like, this entire area basically closed off, making sure that that hopper is isolated. But you're going to want to keep yourself a little bit of a, an area in order to make sure that you can access that comparator over there. Now, if I could find that, uh, that shulker box, because I don't have a shulker farm in this world yet. That would be awesome. There it is. Okay, let's try that again. So we'll put like 16 in there, right? You have your input. You come back for after a long project, put your, uh, your skull box in there. Click this twice. Let that unload. Let it do its thing. Maybe you put a trap door in front of you here just to also isolate that a bit better. Now, it should pop into your shulker, uh, your shulker box over here. So it's nice to kind of have like your items flowing through this entire system going into your sorter. And then it's nice to kind of be able to push your shulker into a completely separate chest. That's basically what I have um, in my storage room. And I'll show you guys. Right over here. I got the exact same module as you guys do. Right here. And this is where all of my shulkers basically get offloaded right there. So if I wanted to, I could just come in here. And this is, this is where my skulk goes. So this is exactly how my system is laid out, basically. But that's basically where my shulkers will end up going. So now I got to show you guys how to basically set up a overflow system and a garbage disposal. So we'll get into that real fast. Okay, so in order to set up a overflow system that goes right into a garbage can, I'm going to show you guys how to do that. And it's incredibly simplistic. So right here. This is where we have our filter basically set up. But if we take all this out of here, this is now set up to be an overflow. So anything that doesn't get sorted through our system will immediately start going into our overflow. Well, what happens when your overflow is completely backed up? Very bad things can happen. So what happens is if you'll notice in here that the redstone line comes out just a little bit. This one's a little bit more because we actually have stuff inside of this uh, hopper. What happens when this guy gets backed up is it all starts to get backed up and then all this redstone bleeds into one another and then starts to basically allow items to go through your filters and stuff like that. So that's not a good thing. So it's incredibly important that we make sure that we are setting up a garbage disposal. So we'll come out around here. Give yourself uh, enough space. Remember, we're going to be using lava, so we don't want to have anything that can basically burn up since we will be putting composters around this area as well. So we're going to come in here just like that. And then you can place your dropper facing into where you want to put your lava. So that's facing into that little section right there. And then hopefully align line this up proper. Yeah, it looks like it. Okay. And then you're going to carry on your hopper chain straight through like that. So let me fly up in here. Anything that doesn't reach this will go straight into the sky. Well, make sure we got to also power this dropper as well. So we're going to place a little dis uh, observer like that. Nope. And we'll place another observer like that. That way that dropper is now consistently flowing. So now when items are starting to stack up, they will all just get shot out here into lava. I would recommend, like I said, using lava over cactus because cactus is extremely unforgiving. If you throw any of your netherite tools or anything like that through the system and it happens to make its way through here, well, you're not going to have a good time. But that is that. So now I'm going to go over some tips to make your storage room a little bit more lag friendly. So let's get into that. Okay, so first and foremost, in order to make your storage room a little bit more lag friendly, you're going to want to place composters all on every single one of your hoppers. 
This is a pre 1.21 thing that a lot of people do in order to make their storage rooms a little bit more streamlined, a little bit more lag friendly. I don't know how much this actually impacts your frames, but I know that in order to do this, it's going to actually help you out a little bit. So make sure you're putting composters on every single one of your hoppers. In 1.20.1, it changes. Well, they'll actually be fixing the AI of a uh, of a hopper and all that kind of stuff to make them a little bit less lag friendly. But you'll notice that I've done that throughout this entire thing. And my light modules basically just have my repeaters on there too. Like that. Which is nice. Another important thing to know, when you have your chain going into your lava... Make sure that your composters are set back because, yes, composters are flammable and you don't want to do that. A huge piece of advice that I would give you guys as well when it comes to lag. Make sure you don't build your storage room inside of your spawn chunks. And if you do plan to do that because you got a beast PC, well, look into the new spawn chunk uh, area in 1.21 i think they're going to be doing a three by three so that's 48 blocks by 48 blocks which is significantly smaller than what it used to be but i think an iron farm should be inside of your spawn chunks anyways but i digress so if you guys want to know any cool mods that can help you run your game a little bit better let's get into that a little bit too one of the main mods that i love to use in order to make my storage room run way smoother is sodium Sodium is a fantastic mod in order to optimize your FPS. If you look in the top left, you'll see that I'm getting about 700 frames in my storage room. Another huge mod that I like to use is Enhance Entities. So you'll see that way over here, I can actually see the chests. That may not uh, stand out to a lot of you guys, but a lot of us... Like, if I didn't have Enhance Blocked Entities, I wouldn't be able to see those chests over there. Because chests are an entity... They'll go invisible at a certain render distance. Same thing goes with uh, shulker boxes and all that jazz. So enhanced block entities is absolutely amazing. Uh, they do a fantastic job with uh, basically making storage rooms a lot more manageable. And those are the two main mods that I like to run in order to make my storage room run as smooth as possible. So... In order to use enhanced block entities, I'm pretty sure you need sodium, so that's a prerequisite. I'll give you guys a couple more ideas with your storage room as well, moving forward. So we have the whole automated feature up here, where we have our lights, our display block, our chest, our shulker loader, all that cool stuff. You're going to want to probably high crafting benches throughout your storage room. That will definitely come in handy, but... You're probably not going to auto-sort every single item in the game, right? And some items in the game you're going to have a massive surplus of. So you'll notice that I've got about five spots right here. So that's 15 double chests. Cut out for just stone. But when it comes to stone, I have an absolute ton of it. So what I've done is I have created these little silos for any extra extra byproduct. Just so I can kind of keep it uh, and all that kind of stuff. I don't keep everything, mind you. I'm not that big of a hoarder. But there are some blocks that I do really love. And I keep, uh, I keep a lot of it. I, I love this block a little bit too much to actually have any surplus of it. But I'm slowly working my way back into it. So there's that. I do really like the system of having the shulker boxes underneath. That way I can just kind of quickly grab and go. The overflow, absolutely amazing. I would make sure that you cut out at least... I have this, like these three uh, boxes right here. That's 15 uh, double chests, which means I did my math wrong for how many uh, double chests of stone I have. So yikes. Um, when it comes to like basically giving yourself room, make sure you know in the future that things will change, right? Your block palettes will change. Purper is a block that I really don't use all that much. So I can actually see purper and uh, purper pillars leaving the storage room at some point. Because I won't need those. Um, Nylium and uh, Crimson Nylium. Those are probably things that will probably end up leaving the storage room as well. Just remember, as your storage room grows, 
and the, the updates keep coming out to future proof your builds, it's okay to let stuff go out of your storage room and to change things around. With this storage room that I've taught you guys how to do today, it's incredibly easy in order to incorporate some really simple designs, thanks to this guy. I also have garbage disposals all throughout my world. So I have like a little water stream here that will throw stuff inside the garbage. I have anvils all over the place. I have another garbage disposal over here. This is a locked chest. So if I accidentally threw all of my tools in here, things aren't automatically going to go straight into lava by accident. Because that is definitely something that you want to make sure that you don't do. Um, so yeah, using using a nice little lock chest with a hopper underneath it is a good way to like kind of make it trash. When you don't really know if you really want to get rid of some stuff, you know? Uh, let's fly back on over here. If you really want to jazz up the place, you could do this. And you can add music to your uh, to your storage room. Make things a little bit more fancy. Down here, I have a big abundance of shulkers that I basically set up over here. I have a concrete converter down here, so I can just mine away at concrete. So we'll go like that. And then we have the unstackables or the items that I'm just not going to put through an item sorter. So a great song, isn't it? If you guys know what song this is, put it in the comment section below. Because if you do, that'll be some mad respect from me. So, I've got all, like, my dyes, my, uh, my extra shulker boxes, my crafting benches, my, uh, my ores and my valuables. They're all kind of set up. Horns. Things that I wouldn't throw through an item sorter. But if even if I did throw stuff through the item sorter that didn't sort, it would go through my overflow, and then I just basically put stuff into here. Uh, another thing that I've got is I have these little areas down here. I call these my little cellars. So if I have a, a super extra abundance of stone or cobblestone, I have another area that I could put it. I've actually been working on like completely emptying out these areas. So that's another idea for you guys. I have a lot of animals inside mine. So I've got kind of like my uh, my foliage, my valuables. In here would be like all my coral, my, um, my vines, my leaves, my saplings, all that jazz. And then, like I said, come down here. We'll have like some basalt and uh, polished basalt. I kind of just display it behind that ladder. Completely random area over here. I haven't even filled this area up yet, but I used a lot of glazed terracotta in this area. Keep a lot of my extra terracottas down here. Inside this cellar. You're free to do whatever you want, and that's the nice thing about having a storage room. We have this whole area. It's kind of like an extra little spot. My lights and my chiseled blocks and all that kind of stuff and my cracked stones. Kind of keep it down there, and then down there would be stone brick, if you guys were able to catch that. And then we have walls, doors, fences. I use this place uh, quite a bit, so I just keep all my, my signs, my walls, iron bars, chains, doors, trap doors, chests, um, ladders, campfires, you name it down there. I have, looks like I have andesite, diorite. And that other guy. So, I'm going to show you guys something incredibly valuable that I actually just added to my storage room that you guys actually already seen. But, I absolutely love it. So, I don't have a super flat world or anything like that. So, what I do is I try to brainstorm all of my block palettes and all of my build designs here in this world live on Twitch every single day. So, if I jump through here... This is a testing facility. So this is where you guys were watching me build everything that I had going on down here. This is where I could do tutorials for you guys. This is where I could work on block palettes. The whole idea to this testing facility is to make it look completely plain. 
with nothing special going on in the background. So the primary focus was just whatever I was building for you guys. This is the brand new addition to my storage room. Like I said, uh, not 100% polished, but I'm probably going to expand probably out that way, out that way, and I'll probably go out that way. So this, the, my whole storage room is a massive part of my world. But I'm able to have a PC, luckily, that's able to run my storage room at a fairly high frame rate. So, we got all of that out the way. Hopefully, I was able to generate some cool ideas for you guys. And hopefully, I was able to help you guys out with a little bit of the redstone behind all the madness. Let me know how your guys' storage rooms show up and turn out inside the future. I would absolutely love to hear about them in the comments below. Or if you guys want to join the Discord, you guys can also do that. But hopefully, this video helped you guys out. Hopefully, you guys... We'll be building some cool storage rooms. So I'll see you guys in the next video. If you guys like the video, please leave a like. And if you want to see more videos, especially of this hardcore world, then subscribe to the channel because I've got a, a lot in store for you guys. So until next time, bye.